have a bunch of passionate people who want to participate in nation building, in policy making, but they don't know the avenues of how to do it effectively. And I think your experience will be very helpful to them as they navigate this journey. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Bharat. Thank you, sir. But if I have to narrate all that, uh, I think it'll take longer than... No, no. You, you choose <laughs> experts of each. No, no. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Uh, good morning to all of you. Um, thank you, Bharat, uh, for inviting me. When um, I got the invitation, I was a bit intrigued because I haven't uh, been to any um, school on public policy in India so far because normally uh, wherever I go, I've been to IITs, I've been to, um, you know, uh, other colleges such as engineering colleges and, you know, other management, business management colleges and several others. But first, uh, let me compl firstly, let me compliment um, the management of Gitam, you know, for uh, thinking about a school and public policy because, you know, we keep hearing about Kennedy, we, speak, we, we keep hearing about many other, in fact, uh, schools. But um, what's really heartening is uh, that even in India now we have institutions such as Geetham who have taken the, uh, you know, first move and said, you know, this is something that we ought to be doing. So therefore, and I'm glad that it is in Hyderabad. So all the more reason for us to be more excited. I'm a, yeah, obviously as many of you might know, or for those of you who don't know, I'm a second generation politician. So I've seen all, my father from very close quarters, from a very early age. So I was always intrigued, I was always curious, I was always obviously um, interested, so to speak, if not directly, but indirectly. I was always interested in public life, wanting to find out more, uh, you know, more about it, etc. Because, you know, the questions that typically, that would cross a kid's mind when you see his uh, father or mother being in politics is, why do they not spend time with me like any normal parent? That's typically what initially would cross through your mind. So having gone through a lot of those questionings, a lot of, a lot of that, uh, you know, uh, inner, um, you know, introspection, so to speak, I think uh, it was natural that at a later stage in my formative years, I understood the importance of the job that my father was doing as a public representative. He was an MLA, he was then a minister, he was then, uh, you know, uh, he was, he worked in a variety of roles. So one thing I've realized as I, grew up. My father always wanted me to be a, an, uh, an uh, you know, Indian Administrative Service Officer. In fact, uh, Mr. B. R. Meena is here, who worked uh, very closely with us. Meena Saab was our Special Chief Secretary, I think, when he retired. And now he works uh, here with you guys. You're fortunate to have somebody as uh, experienced as Meena Ji is uh, to, to guide you guys. So one of the things he wanted me to be was, uh, you know, write UPSC and um, be, a, be an officer. So it's not like my father actually trained me. It's not like he actually wanted me to follow in his footsteps. In fact, uh, most of you do, may not know this, and this might come as a surprise also. In fact, I came in without his knowledge. I came in and joined uh, public life without his knowledge. Let me just quickly narrate the story to you. So initially, when he said uh, that I should write my um, UPSC exam and then you know, become an officer, he said, you know, you, for you to understand uh, you know, the kind of uh, uh, work an Indian Administrative Service Officer would do or even aspiring students, uh, you know, who, who kind of give these UPSC exams, you need to go to Delhi. So he sent me to JNU for uh, almost two months. So I lived in, uh, you know, Delhi, Lutians uh, for a bit and um, went and, you know, kind of got a first-hand experience. I didn't enroll myself in JNU, but I hung around with a few friends because I had a, a few friends there. I hung around there, you know, I was looking at all, all kinds of people there. One thing that struck me, you know, as, as very, very interesting it uh, JNU was, you know, there was something written on the wall there. It said, uh, in a democracy when, uh, you know, in the large, we are the world's largest democracy, you guys know that. In a democracy when everything is decided by politics, you better decide what your future politics is. This was what was written. It was intriguing. It said, I said, what is this? What does it mean? What it basically means is, you know, from the time we get up in the morning till the time we go to bed every single day, every single thing that kind of has a direct or an indirect impact uh, on us as individuals, as citizens, is essentially decided by the governments, both either in Delhi, that is the union government, or, you know, the state government. So it is important, if not to dabble directly in politics or to, if not to run for a public office, it is important that we are politically aware it is important that we participate in the process. It is important for us to know what 
you know, what our ideology is or it is important for us to know who stands for what. I think it's important for us to understand that. And to that direction, I think a school of public policy, of course, is a great step. I compliment all of you, 50 students who are uh, uh, enrolled here from 18 states, I was told. My compliments to all of you on, uh, you know, wanting to be a part of the process. Now, I have, you know, after, after my master's in biotechnology in, from Pune University, um, I, I've left for the U.S. I told my father that, you know, after seeing JNU and after, in, fa in fact, a cousin of mine, a first cousin of mine, was an Indian Forest Service officer. So I interacted with him a bit and he said, listen, if you want to make, uh, if you want the material comforts of life, and if you want, uh, you know, not just uh, fame, but also the other material comforts and uh, other things in life, then this is not for you. If, you. if you want to serve the nation, if you just are content, you know, doing, uh, 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 you know, good service, then this is the role, otherwise don't join. But obviously I was, what, 21, I think? I said, you know, all my friends are rushing to the U.S. Let me go and get my master's also there. So I went to the U.S. I have a master's in business administration as well. And then eventually I started working there. It was a dot-com boom then. Now it's called startups. But back then it was called dot-com. This was 98, 99. So I worked for a bit. And I worked there till 2004. And in 2004, I came back to India on my own job. In fact, I was heading the entire South Asian region for my company. And from 2004 until 2006, I worked out of Bombay. I was traveling the entire South Asia except Pakistan, where I was not given a visa, otherwise I would have gone there too. Uh, <laughs> I went to Bangladesh, I went to Sri Lanka, I went to uh, Nepal, I went to, uh, uh, of course, I was based out of Bombay and Hyderabad. So I worked there and in 2006, the Telangana Rashtra Samiti, which was headed by the current chief minister and, uh, and our party president, Sri Chandrasekhar Rao Garu, was part of the U UPA. Um, and then the whole premise of that coalition with Congress back in 2004 was the Telangana statehood formation. But unfortunately that didn't happen, so he resigned, he quit UPA and resigned his uh, parliament membership in 2006. And without even informing my party president and my father, I just jumped, I uh, quit my, quit my uh, you know, job without telling him and I started uh, working. Because I knew for a fact that if I asked him then he would say no. So I said, okay, this is not happening, and then I uh, just wanted to play my role, do my thing, and just be supportive of him. That's how the journey started. From 2006 until 2009, I worked as a party worker. In 2008, I think it was, I was given uh, the general secretaryship of the party. 2009, I contested, won with a narrow margin of 171 votes from a constituency which is about 140 kilometers from here, called a Sirsila. It's, uh, it's a textile town in Telangana, hub of power looms. I won with a narrow margin, 171 votes. But within a year of 2009, uh, I had resigned, you know, as a protest against the then government reneging on its promise. On 9th of December 2009, Union government had announced that they are initiating the process of formation of Telangana. And then within 15 days, they went back and they said, it is not something that they are going to, uh, you know, commit to. So we had resigned in protest, and in that subsequent, uh, by election that came up in 2010 February, I won back with about 89,000 votes. You know, we wanted to register that voice of the people, that mood of the people to the nation, that you know, Telangana and its citizens are, you know, keenly wanting a separate state and can, union government cannot go back on its promise. And then came 2014 election, by which time you know the pressure mounted mounted on the union government. They had to concede Telangana, and in 2014 Telangana was formed. I won the election in 2014, became a minister. 2018, again, we went to polls, won it again. And so this is my brief journey, politically speaking. Now, going back to Bharat's point about how the journey has been and what challenges we've faced in terms of policy, in terms of politics, in terms of a lot of things. Back in 2014, there were three or four questions that I used to get asked every so often by the media, by my friends, everybody. They used to ask me why should Telugu se be separated? Why do we need two separate states? I said, why separation, firstly? Secondly, the question that used to get asked was, we used to get asked was, will it be viable? Will it work? What is the need? You know, how can it work, etc. The third thing is, which is a bit derogatory, but we used to get this question all the time. Does the leadership of, the, does the current leadership in Telangana have it, do they have it in them to run a state? 
Do you have that leadership abilities? It was derogatory, it was humiliating, you know, to get that question. But uh, it, we used to get that. Do you have it in you, actually, to be able to run a state? This was a question. So just to put it in a capsule, the journey that started in 2014 on the 2nd of June as a new state for Telangana was something that was, uh, you know, was, that, was something that kind of started on a very interesting note. There were a lot of apprehensions. There were a lot of doubts. There were a lot of prejudices, you know, that this party which ran this agitation, you know, the Telangana Rashtra Samiti, since it was voted to power, how will they treat people from other regions who are residing in this state? How will they be able to handle, you know, all the aspirations of the people? All these questions are obviously there. Now, when you, when you think, look back seven years, and when you think, uh, you know, about what the doubts were, you know, a couple of things were also said. The then Chief Minister, Mr. Kiran Kumar Reddy, had famously said that, you know, if Telangana becomes a state, the state would be under complete darkness. You know, the power generating stations are all in coastal Andhra and Rail Sima. So therefore, Telangana will be a power deficit state and you won't even have 24 hours of power. Not even 24. In fact, he said, you'd be in a gloom. That's what he said. And it was also said that forget about new investments. Forget about new investments, fresh investments. Even the existing investors would run away from Hyderabad and would desert and would leave Telangana. So the youth of Telangana would be really, you know, groping in the dark when it comes to employment opportunities. So these were all the, you know, this was, this was a cloud of suspicion, cloud of apprehension, as I put it. This was what was the situation back in 2014. In fact, there was a state, uh, you know, uh, the state of affairs was so bad. There was a time in, before 2014. Normally, you see people protesting for, uh, you know, electricity. You know, like you have ordinary people, you have farmers, you have others who kind of do hartal when, they, when the power supply is not good. But in United Andhra Pradesh, back in the time of uh, 2013 and thereabout, we had a situation where we had the industrialists of Telangana doing hartals at uh, Dharna Chaukya. That's how bad the situation was. When our Honorable Chief Minister assumed office, you know, uh, in 2014, June, he assured people of three things. He, sh he said, law and order would be a top priority. He said, we'll focus on fundamentals and we will ensure that whatever promises we have made, you know, to the people during the statehood agitation will be fulfilled. If you look back and see what has been achieved in the last seven years, today Telangana, in fact, is a leader on a number of fronts. Telangana, when it was part of United Andhra Pradesh, was one of those regions which was drought prone, which was heavily dependent on, you know, rains because of the crop pattern, etc., and even the irrigation uh, uh, potential here was never, uh, you know, fulfilled. It was undermined all along. So it was heavily dependent, you know, on rains and heavily dependent on groundwater. And the Telangana farmers, you know, if you look at it, the number of suicides and the backwardness in this region was one among the highest in the country. In fact, a district here called as Mahbub Nagar in Telangana was one of the most backward state districts in the entire country. In United Andhra Pradesh, there were two districts, Anantpur and Mahbub Nagar. These two districts were consistently top of the charts whenever Government of India released a report on backwardness, on suicides, on mi migration, etc., etc. These were the two districts that you always used to be on top of the charts. So that was a situation. Within six months of assuming office, our Honorable Chief Minister with his abilities has been able to solve the first and foremost challenge that was faced by everybody in Telangana, that was the issue of power, electricity. Now, a lot of people ask us, how did you do it? How did your chief minister do it? How did your government do it? The fact is, our thermal power generating stations, our idle power generating stations, our solar, etc., have been operating extremely efficiently now. The PLF is something you know, that we can really boast about, that we can really you know, uh, uh, consider, we can gloat about, in fact. The second thing we've done is we've ensured that all sectors, all three important sectors, industry, farmers, and domestic consumers, all of them today in Telangana receive 24 hours of uninterrupted power supply. And Telangana is the only state in the country, in fact, which actually delivered on the 24 hour free power pro uh, promise to the farmers. Now, a lot of questions about whether free power is a good thing, bad thing, you know, there are lots of questions on subsidies, etc., that we can come to during Q&A. But what else have we achieved in the last seven years? Now this, if you look at the installed capacity of power before June 2nd, 2014, 
it was 7,780 megawatts. Now today, within seven years of Telangana, the installed capacity of power in Telangana is more than 16,000 megawatts. We've more than doubled uh, you know, our power output. The per capita consumption, and typically per capita consumption of power is one barometer for progress of any uh, economy. Today, Telangana is the number one state when it comes to per capita consumption of power. Now that is again truly uh, an astounding story if you look at it in terms of where we were and where we've achieved. We have already crossed, in fact, uh, I think it was last June, we've already crossed the combined United Andhra Pradesh's power demand, the highest peak demand was about 12,000 megawatts or something. We've already crossed that as a separate state now, as a smaller state in the last, you know, in this, in the, in this year, uh, uh, I think in the month of June or May. So that's how much, uh, you know, the power consumption has grown. It, it can be attributed to industrial expansion. It can be attributed to agriculture expansion. It can be attributed, of course, to domestic, uh, increased domestic consumption also. So that's how Telangana has been growing. The other thing which is fascinating about Telangana is our Honorable Chief Minister is a man who comes from grassroots. So he said we'll focus on fundamentals. Today I'm proud to share with you that Telangana is the first state in India. I mean, after 75 years of independence, it's a shame that you know, we have to boast about this, but nevertheless, I have to say it. We are the first state in India which has been able to completely connect each and every rural household with a portable drinking water tap. And this is not me saying it. This is the Jal Shakti mission or Jal Jeevan mission, I think it's called, uh, in Delhi, in Union government. They have actually said it on the floor of the house in parliament. The water resources minister has said Telangana is the largest state uh, which has got 100% rural household tap connectivity. Now, this is a unique distinction. This was done with $9 billion of investment. Now, the, what are the challenges that one faces when conceiving such a project? I was a minister who was looking after rural water supply when this project was envisioned by our honorable chief minister. In fact, I should uh, share this with you. He had done the same project in his constituency back in 1998. As an MLA, as a minister or from Siddhi Pet, Sri K. Chandrasekhar Rao has completed the same project in 98 in his own constituency with 108 crores of rupees. So the same thing was to be replicated at a state level. That was his vision. So initially we said, okay, what are the best examples in the country you know, as to who's done what when it comes to drinking water? We received a letter from Prime Minister Modi saying, you know, we please study the Gujarat model and uh, how they've done uh, drinking water supply, you know, uh, to even the most uh, parched areas such as Kutch, etc. So I myself have led a delegation of officers and a few legislators also to study what has been done in Gujarat. When we reached there, you know, we met with the officers, we met with the bureaucrats, we met with the ministers and we met, met with the uh, other people who were involved in the project. They said, you know, we, it took us about eight years under uh, Chief Minister, the then Chief Minister Narendra Modi ji's leadership to cover about 70% of our state. So when we told them that our objective is to cover the entire state in three or four years, they laughed at us. They said, you know, Modi ji kar nahi paaye, saat aat saal mein, aap kya karoge, kaise karoge? They were, they were, you know, they were those uh, sarcastic smirks, you know, kya karoge, kaise karoge, kaise mumkin hai, etc., etc. But today, within a matter of three and a half years, with nine, almost, uh, the initial outlay was about nine billion dollars, which roughly translates to about, I think, uh, about 60 now, but back then it was, I think, um, and you, you know, rupee valuation, etc. About 45 back then. So, when we started off, the project looked humongous, honestly. When, when we, even our engineer in chief, a gentleman called Surinder Reddy, he was my engineer in chief back then, when I initially, an honorable CM called us for a meeting and told us, this is something that you have to deliver in three years, he almost fell off his chair. He said, sir, we've never done a project which is more than 400 crores. So how do you expect us to do a 45,000 crore project in three years? How do we do it? Our honorable CM said, visit Siddhi Pet, what we've done there, visit Gujarat, and visit whatever you want, whichever country you want to go, visit, please go there and visit it. But the fact is, this is doable, there is financial support from the government, please make it happen. As part of this large project, we were supposed to lay a pipeline of nearly 140,000 kilometers. Now 140,000 kilometers, for those of you who are unaware, I think it's, it is two, two and a half or three times the circumference of Earth. That's how big the pipeline is, that's how humongous the effort is. When we were conceptualizing this project, I was not only Minister of Panchayati Raj, but I was also the Minister of 
information technology. So we were talking on how to, you know, it's a challenge obviously, it's a challenge and we wanted to do uh, a little bit more than, you know, what Gujarat has done or what anybody, any other state has done in the country. So we were also discussing on what else to do, how, what else to dovetail into the same trench. One of the things we decided is, since we are trenching the entire landscape of Telangana anyway for 140,000 kilometers, we said why don't we also lay uh, a, a fiber optic cable? Because this tap water is going to go to, to every house and this pipeline is going to go to every house. So we might as well, you know, save cost and dovetail and, you know, piggyback on this project and also put in fiber optic cable. Today again, I'm happy to share with you Telangana Fiber Grid, the project which was dovetailed and which was piggybacking, piggybacking on uh, the Telangana Mission Bagirata, the drinking water project. Today is almost nearing completion and once it is done, Telangana will again be one of those rare states, few states, which would be offering a 100 Mbps broadband connection to each and every home. And the possibilities, you guys know better than me, of e-health, e-commerce, e-education, and how much of a drastic change it can bring about in rural hinterland is something that you can only imagine. You're only limited by your imagination. So when it comes to policy making, when it comes to taking up humongous tasks, our Honorable Chief Minister is a man who does not shy away from a challenge. He also took it upon himself as a challenge. You know, Telangana, like I told you, uh, one of the taglines of the Telangana statehood agitation was, you know, in te I'll say that in Telugu, Nilu, Nidhulu, Niyamakal. What that means is water, you know, uh, Nidhulu is funds, uh, money, and Niyamakalu is employment. So water was one of the significant, uh, uh, you know, issues as part of the overall Telangana statehood agitation. And our Honorable Chief Minister, having conceptualized a program in drinking water, also wanted to do something equally humongous on irrigation. When we assumed office, farmer suicides were at their highest, uh, possibly one of the highest in the country after Maharashtra. And then uh, the irrigation potential in Telangana was never tapped because the logic that was always served to us was that the water you know, level of the two uh, rivers here, Krishna and Godavari, is you know, uh, uh, if you look at the water and the, and the, and the uh, ground, uh, or the, you know, the if you look at the topography of Telangana, the hinterland of Telangana is above, you know, the sea level, much above the sea level. So therefore, it was always, uh, uh, you know, the logic that was served to us was that unless you invest significant amounts in lift irrigation projects in both power generation and also uh, in, in, in uh, building up uh, in capital expenditure, you'll not be able to complete these projects. Our Honorable Chief Minister today, happy to share with you, has not only conceptualized but has completed, I don't know how many of you know this, the world's largest multi-stage lift irrigation project called as Kaleshwaram project, you can look it up in Google, YouTube, in a matter of three and a half years. And this is a project which has brought under cultivation, brought under irrigation, more than 45 lakh acres of uh, uh, arable land. This has drastically changed the fortunes of Telangana. While we are, of course, working on other projects like Palamuru Rangare Delift Irrigation, we are working on Sita Rama, we've also not ignored the minor irrigation resources. I went to the US in 2015, again, uh, as a minister. I went to a state called Minnesota. Uh, I met the governor there, I met lots of people there, and you know, they were taking, they always take a lot of pride, you know, calling Minnesota a land of 10,000 lakes. Now, I told them Telangana has more than 46,000 tanks. They were surprised. They said, really? You have 46,000 tanks? We are, in fact, a lot of times, you know, terminology and uh, taxonomy sometimes also is off-putting in a lot of ways for policymakers and in terms of prioritization. When you say minor irrigation, it automatically in your mind becomes a minor uh, uh, source of irrigation. But that's not the case. Under tank, tank irrigation in Telangana, there was a time and there were more than 15 to 20 lakh acres of cultivation. But unfortunately, because of meager allocations with that terminology minor coming into play, uh, you know, governments, one after another, have ignored this, uh, this, this specific sector. Allocations were meager, so there was not much that they could do. As a result, irrigation suffered and agriculture suffered. But under our government, we took up another challenging program called as Mission Kakatiya, to revive, to strengthen, to, to uh, ensure that each of the irrigation potential of these minor irrigation tanks is brought back to its full capacity. 
Happy to share again, out of these 46,000, we've already completed nearly 22,000 tanks, fully strengthened them, revived them, rejuvenated them, under which again, a lot of irrigation potential again has been resurrected. Now, because of all these, today Food Corporation of India, not me saying it, but Food Corporation of India, Ministry of Agriculture, Government of India, has recognized Telangana as the topmost paddy producing state in the country. From a parched region, in a matter of seven years today, Telangana has become the topmost paddy producing state in the country, which is by no means a small feat. Because this was a region, I come from a, a constituency called Sirsila, which was drought prone, which was full of you know, uh, 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 distress, far, distressed farmers, etc. To have achieved this kind of growth in a very short span is nothing, nothing short of astounding. How did our Honorable CM do it? Did he just focus on irrigation? No. He came out with pioneering and path-breaking programs. Farm input assistance. This has never been done by any state or any government in the world, except Telangana. And our Honorable Chief Minister on the 10th of May 2018 launched a program called Raitu Bandhu, which is farm input assistance. A lot of people scoffed at it. They said, is it doable? Can, can he do it? Today, we offer farm input assistance for two seasons, both Rabi and Kharif. Uh, of 5,000 rupees per acre, and it is now running into almost 15,000 crores per annum. It's a DBT, direct benefit transfer to the farmer's account. 62 lakh farmers are benefited every year. As a result, not only has the agricultural production yield, productivity of farmers in Telangana has increased, but also the farm suicides, the suicides of farmers have come down drastically. Telangana again has that unique distinction of being able to reduce the farmer's suicides, and not me saying it. Government of India, in the, on the floor of the House in Parliament, has said it in the recently uh, conducted, uh, recently held uh, Parliament sessions that Telangana is the number one state when it comes to reducing farmer suicides in the country. So these are, I can go on and on, there are many things that we've done in the last seven years. In clean energy, in renewable energy, we are number two in the country. Today we are second only to Karnataka. But if you look at landmass and pro rata, I think we are number one in the country. Because Karnataka is a much, much bigger state than us, so we are number one on that. And one program I think that many of you will like. Our Honorable Chief Minister is a passionate environmentalist. He's not only a passionate farmer, he's a passionate environmentalist. When we assumed office, the forest cover in Telangana was 23%. Today, after seven years, again, not me saying it, Government of India saying it, and Forest Research Institute of Government of India saying it, it has increased the forest cover in Telangana from 23 to 28%. So 5% increase in forest cover because of a program called as Harita Haram. Now, this Harita Haram is a unique program. It's the third largest effort in human history, for those of you who don't know. Planting 230 crore saplings over a period of seven years is something that has been not done by any government. Today, anywhere you go in Telangana, any nook and corner, you will see greenery. You will see saplings, avenue plantations. You will see forest blocks being rejuvenated. But we are not going to stop at 28%. Our dream is to get to 33% to begin with, and eventually, again, continue that journey and make Telangana one of those biodiverse regions in our country. I can go on, Bharat. There are many, many things I can say. There are many, we'll, many things. Uh, I think we'll save that. We'll, we'll open it up for questions, Andy. I think uh, so. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, I think my own uh, journey, having been born in Hyderabad, raised here, but with roots in Andhra, I was, I was quite sad when the state split and that... Uh, as Telugu people, we can't be together. But I think now, over the last seven-year journey, I'm proud of the growth that uh, Telangana has achieved, Hyderabad has achieved. And I think this is an example no, where... No, 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 don't forget what Andhra has achieved also. In fact, we always maintained that separation is going to benefit both states. In fact, if you look at it, the number of new ports that are coming up in Andhra, that have come up in Andhra, the number of new institutions that have come up in Andhra, it would not have happened if it was That's United sure. Central Andhra. government institutions wouldn't have come in Andhra otherwise. It would have been concentrated maybe in Hyderabad. And uh, the other thing is about balancing um, urban development, urban infrastructure, ensuring that our cities become our economic growth engines, but also ensuring that uh, rural areas, agriculture benefit. And I think that balance has been done very well here. Um, I'd like to open it up. Uh, so in the center here are the students of uh, Kautilya. We have some of our faculty uh, participating in this session also. I will take some faculty questions, but I'm, uh, most of the questions are going to be directed towards uh, our students at Kautilya, I hope you understand that. Okay, so who all have questions, can you please raise your hands? Um, in blue, uh, female, in the front. Please introduce yourself and then ask the question. Thank uh, please you. Please sit, please sit, please sit. Uh, I'm Vinaya, and uh, 
first of all, uh, we need more politicians like you who actually implement policies and we see uh, the results of them. Uh, so you talked about how you implemented policies, but could you elaborate on any challenges you have, may have faced while you, while you were implementing this policy and how you faced those challenges? Thank you, Vinaya. Which part of India are you from? Maharashtra. Maharashtra. Pune. Which part oh, of Maharashtra? Pune. Oh, my place. <laughs> I went to Pune University. I was at Ganesh Khan for two years. Good meeting you. Um, Vinaya, great question. Uh, because, you know, and with all due respect, uh, Meena Saab is here. So I'll take liberties and I'll say a few things about bureaucracy. Meena Saab, bura na maniya, kyunki aap to abhi to aap retire ho So, <laughs> you know, the typical thinking when it comes to bureaucracy in India is, उनको लगता है कि ये लोग जो पॉलिटिशियन लोग हैं पहली बात तो उनको लगता है कि हम ज्यादा नहीं जानते हैं मैं मैं सच सच बोल रहा हूं आई एम गोइंग टू आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू बिट ब्लंटली आल्सो उनको लगता है कि हो हमसे ज्यादा पढ़े लिखे हैं वो हमसे ज्यादा स्मार्ट हैं होशियार हैं और पूरा प्रोग्राम या जो भी है वही कंसेप्चुअलाइज कर सकते हैं एग्जीक्यूट भी वही कर सकते हैं और उनको ये भी लगता है कि हम लोग पांच साल के लिए चुने हुए गेस्ट आर्टिस्ट हैं वो लोग तो परमानेंट आर्टिस्ट हैं वो जब तक रिटायर होंगे तब तक रहेंगे साठ साल तक या सिक्सटी वन तक रहेंगे तो मीना साहब ने तो बहुत सारे मंत्रियों को देखा होगा बहुत सारे एम को देखा होगा इट बी लाइक अरे यार ऐसे ऐसे बहुत सारे लोगों को देखा मैंने सो ईच टाइम वेन वी कम आउट विथ अ न्यू आइडिया और अ न्यू पॉलिसी द इनिशियल रेजिस्टेंस ऑलवेज स्टार्ट राइट एट द टॉप ब्यूरोक्रेसी विल रेजिस्ट बिकॉज सी आई एम नॉट ब्लेमिंग अ सर्टन सेक्शन ऑफ ब्यूरोक्रेसी आई एम सेइंग पीपल बाय नेचर आर रेजिस्टेंट टू चेंज मुझे कोई चीज की आदत है देखिए मैं बेड पे मैं लेफ्ट की साइड सोता हूँ अगर आप मुझे बोलो कि कल राइट की तरह सो मैं आई बी कंप्लीटली स्लीपलेस दैट्स हाउ ह्यूमन बींग्स आर वी आर रेजिस्टेंट टू चेंज दर क्रिएट इज अ हैबिट सो ब्यूरोक्रेसी इन इंडिया इज द फर्स्ट चैलेंज दैट हैज टू बी ओवरकम बाय एनी पब्लिक रिप्रेजेंटेटिव बिकॉज द बिगेस्ट चैलेंज इज फॉर अस टू देखिए आप एक चीज समझ समझ लीजिए वेन वी गेट इलेक्टेड वी गेट इलेक्टेड फॉर फाइव ईयर्स राइट तो जब मैं एम बना टू थाउजेंड में मुझे कोई आइडिया नहीं था कि एम का मतलब क्या क्या उसका करने का है मतलब कर क्या सकता है करना क्या चाहिए उसको आई नो दैट ही इज अ मेंबर ऑफ लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली वी आर वी आर सपोज टू एनैक्ट लेजिस्लेशन वी आर सपोज टू इंश्योर दैट यू नो दीज लेजिस्लेशन एक्चुअली आर एग्जीक्यूटेड बाय आर ब्यूरोक्रेसी दैट्स दैट्स द डेफिनेशन ब्रॉडली बट एक्सपीरियंस इतने इंटरेस्टिंग होते हैं मैं एक दिन अपने घर पर हूं सुबह साढ़े बजे मुझे एक कॉल आया दिस वॉज इन टू एक हमारा पार्टी का एक छोटा लीडर है सिरसिला में उसने कॉल किया इसे इस भैया अर्जेंट है मैंने बोला क्या हुआ बोलता है अभी वाटर का टैंकर आया मेरे गली में जरा उसको बोल के मेरा जो मेरा पॉट है उसको आगे लगवाने के लिए बोल दो <laughs> मैं बोला यार मैं एम एल ए हूं आई एम सपोज टू बी एनैक्टिंग लेजिस्लेशन और आदमी फोन करके मुझे बोल रहा है कि वाटर टैंकर वाले को बोलो मेरा पॉट आगे लगाए मेरा अब आई आई वॉज बिट परफ्लेक्स आई वॉज लाइक ओके वॉट डू आई डू नाउ Firstly, because there is no orientation session for a newly elected legislator, you know there is no public school of policy which kind of guides us, tells us what to do, what not to do. आज क्या हो गया ना? Because of social media particularly, मैं किसी को भी कुछ भी बोल सकता हूँ. मैं prime minister को भी बोलता हूँ कि मेरा घर के सामने drainage ठीक नहीं है. क्या कर रहे हो तुम? तुम्हारा स्वच्छ भारत क्या हो गया? That is the level of liberty people take because there is confusion in terms of roles, responsibilities, divisions. कोई किसी को कुछ नहीं पता कि किसको बोलना चाहिए, किसको complain करना चाहिए. See, in India, we have a beautiful system of, you know, five-tier system of, you know, uh, governance. We have the union government, the state governments, the zilla panchay, zilla parishads. We have, you know, taluka panchayats, and then we have the uh, uh, gram panchayats, the five-tier governance. And there is also the municipal, which are kind of is uh, parallel to all of these. So, ab councillor ko kya karna chahiye, sarpanch ko kya karna chahiye, or ZPTC ko kya karna chahiye. मंडल परिषद प्रेसिडेंट को क्या करना चाहिए जिला परिषद चेयरमैन को क्या करना चाहिए एमएलए को क्या करना चाहिए एमपी को क्या करना चाहिए ये रोल क्लैरिटी जो है ना इसमें बहुत कंफ्यूजन है और इस कंफ्यूजन में इट इज कंपाउंडेड बाय द ब्यूरोक्रेसी यू नो इनहेरेंट रेजिस्टेंस टू चेंज सो इनिशियली वेन वी स्टार्टेड आर जर्नी वेन आर ऑनरेबल चीफ मिनिस्टर सेट हमें रईतु बंधु करना है इनफैक्ट आई आई सेंड यू सॉरी हरिता हारम करना है प्लांट टू थर्टी क्रोड सैपलिंग्स I'll send you a write-up. Uh, in fact, uh, one of our bureaucrats, um, her name is Shweta Mahanti. She was Hyderabad collector until three days ago. She just uh, went on a. Uh, she's gone to Kennedy. In fact, I think uh, she's going to ha Harvard for a one-year uh, 
uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I think course on public policy. Public administration. Maybe. Public administration. Yeah. So she wrote a paper. She gave it to me before she left. She wrote a paper on how skeptical she was on day one when Honorable Chief Minister said, 230 crore plantation karna hai. Pehli baat, jib bhi koi aisa radical thought sonchte ho, radical idea aata hai kisi ke man mein, to hame lagta hai ki ye to kya hai, yare na mumkin hai, nahi ho sakta hai. So there is that in inherent change, inherent resistance. So in our case, when we said Mission Bhagirath, we want to give drinking water connection to each and every home. Engineers said, no, not possible. You go to Gujarat, even they laugh at us. They say, no, no, nahi, nahi ho sakta. India mein kisi ne kiya hi nahi, tum kya karoge? Naya raj hai. Tumhe pata hi nahi, tumhara kya financial resources kya hai? Kaise karoge? So all these challenges. But I think one, one thing that, is, that Telangana has shown is that if you have the political will, if you have that ability in you to drive a project with a mission mode, Things can happen, things will, will happen. Even bureaucracy, initial after initial resistance, they'll fall in line. They'll also say, okay, inka irada theek hai, inka irada neek hai, to karenge, kuch kar sakte hai. So, fundamental challenge is bureaucracy, one, firstly. Secondly, finances. Finances, you know, even our institutions, financial institutions in India, are not used to, to leveraging our economy. Dar jate hai log. Aap ek, ek, kyunki you're all students of public policy, you should understand economics also. एक गवर्नमेंट चलाना और एक घर चलाना बहुत अलग बात है घर चलाना मतलब बजटिंग के हिसाब से ठीक ऑलमोस्ट सेम है बट देर आर लॉट ऑफ चेंजेस सी फॉर एग्जांपल लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंसेस फॉर एग्जांपल द इकोनॉमी ऑफ तेलंगाना टुडे आर पर कैपिटा इनकम इज मोर देन डबल्ड इन द लास्ट सेवन इयर्स विच इज अगेन बाय नो मीन्स अ स्मॉल फीट वी आर मच मच अब द कंट्रीज पर कैपिटा इनकम नेशनल एवरेज पर कैपिटा इनकम हाउ डिज दैट हैपन That happened because we are leveraging our economy. Ham log dar nahi jaate hain debt se. Because as long as you have taken a, you have taken a debt and have invested in a productive, uh, uh, have, it, have invested it in a productive sector. Ham hamne jab debt liya mission bhagirath ke liye ya irrigation ke liye, hamne ye sunch ke liya ki ek rupya agar ham debt lete hain, isko kaise ham tabdil kar sakte hain do ya three rupya mein. As long as you are able to rotate that rupee, as long as you are able to leverage. your economy properly as long as you are able to create more wealth i think you will be in good shape but unfortunately our financial institutions in india be it uh, your bank banks or other financial institutions they are a bit apprehensive when it comes to uh, lending and as such our indian mentality also you know we have frbm and other restrictions you know that fiscally responsible budgetary monitoring etc you know all of these uh, uh, you know challenges that go with a new project being conceptualized definitely ought to be worked out. And the third challenge I would say are inherent to our governance systems. For example, we want to irrigation project, additional irrigation area uh, uh, under cultivation. Will it be the environment of biodiversity or will it be the benefit of this thing? There are a lot of discussions in Delhi and MOEF in the MOEF, Ministry of Environment and Forest. And many times, many times, many times, many times. So all of these challenges we have faced in the last seven years, financial, bureaucratic, and general mindset challenges, institutional challenges, but I think uh, to a great extent we've been able to overcome. Thank you, sir. Um, Rawson, over there, grey shirt. Good morning, sir. My name is Rawson Gonsalves. Uh, so one thing that we have seen world over is the effect of climate change, including our country. Uh, you're the Minister of uh, Municipal Administration and Urban Development, so I want to understand from you how is sustainability and climate risk incorporated in policy making, especially in these portfolios that you hold? Roshan, right? Roshan. 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 Yeah. Which part of India are you from, Roshan? Mumbai, sir. Mumbai. Um, Roshan, two, two, three things. You know, climate change is real. It's no more what we read in books, etc. I think uh, if you look at the UN report a couple of days ago, they've even said, you know, code red for humanity. They said, uh, High time you guys take charge, otherwise there's no humanity. So it is real. But what is happening also, since you talked urban development is, whatever urbanization that has happened in last 5,000 years, double or you know, triple of that is going to happen in the next 50 years. That's how much urbanization is happening across the world, not just India. In fact, suburbanization and urbanization are two phenomenon which no government in India has been able to tackle. N not, in, not in India, in, across the world. In fact, China tried it. They said, in fact, uh, they even came out with a permit system for people to move from rural areas to, you know, urban uh, pockets. And they said, we'll only permit a certain number and not more. 
so that that uh, rapid urbanization can be contained. But nobody has been successful. Now, why do people actually move? Why do people migrate? Why do people urbanize? I think we need to answer that question firstly. Firstly, for better livelihood, better health care, better employment, better uh, you know, education opportunities. These are the three things. Now, when people do migrate, what happens is obviously the urban infrastructure, which is never um, on par with our growing urbanization, will crumble. What happens when urban infrastructure crumbles? I was just looking at the road leading to Gitam. I should tell Bharat, you know, to also lay a better road all the way from road till your university. Yeah, morning ke baad theek hai, but wahan tak theek nahi hai. Aapko I have something to say on this, but after this is over, I'll tell you. <laughs> Come on, you should be doing some CSR also, no, Gitam? What do you guys say? Clap if, clap if you agree with me. See, Bharat, they all agree with me. Point is, this will happen. There is no substitute. I mean, the kind of population that we are. Look at Hyderabad. We are one of the largest cities in India. We are among one of the seven largest metros in India. And uh, our population grows every year, every month, every day, every week. Are we on par? I think we are much better than any other city in India. But I can't be relatively happy. right? Our drinking water, in fact, we don't have to get pani in tankers like Chennai does. Uh, uh, we are not as bad as Mumbai in a lot of counts in terms of infrastructure. My friend came from Mumbai two or three days ago. He said that your infrastructure is better than us. So I said, I don't want to take comfort from my relative, but thank you. When you talk about sustainability, Rosen, I think we are doing our bit, but it's just not enough. I think it can't just be the role of a government. And the word sustainability, it's not, it, it permeates into all sectors, all spheres of life. It's not just confined to rural development or urban development or industry or, you know, uh, or this or that. I can't confine myself to that. It kind of permeates into all of that. And unless we as humanity collectively take charge, a government by itself can't do it. Sir, Telangana government has launched what is called as Harita Haram, one effort. Now, government of India has yesterday announced that all ban on plastic from July next year. I'm thinking to myself, you know, I want to do it as a responsible citizen. But what is the substitute for plastic? Go to the cow pele. Sasta jo substitute hai, wo dikha ke baat karo. I say, policy banane se kuch nahi hota hai. Slogan dene se kuch nahi hota hai. Agar mein kal tak bol dhu, pura India ko digitize karo. Usse kya hota hai? Uska digital infrastructure chahiye, digital literacy chahiye, digital uh, 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 awareness chahiye. Training chahiye, skill upgrading chahiye. Ye sab karne, kar, karne ke, malab, karne ke baad agar aap slogan dete ho, to successful hoga. Sustainability pe bhi, humari government ne kuch kiya hai, but I think there's a lot more to be done, but this has to be done collectively and not, just can't be a government's responsibility. Thank you. Um, so in the students, I want the ones who haven't yet asked a question. So if you have, then put your hand down so that I know who hasn't asked a question. Are you cheating? Okay, yeah. Red, red shirt here. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, my name is Audambar and I come from uh, Kolhapur, Maharashtra. My question is, how does this public policy course will help me to work at the grassroots level? Uh, because many of, uh, when we have a discussion in our court, most of the people think that they, have, they want to work at the international level, international organizations or the central government like Niti Ayok. But if I come from grassroots, how do you think there will be an opportunity to work at the district level or block level? What Thank did you. you say your name was? Your name. Your name. Naam. Audumbar. 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 Yeah. Unique name, boss. What uh, is it? It's a local traditional Marathi name for uh, Deity uh, Brahma. Achha, Deity yeah. Brahma. Nice. Audumbar. Thank you. Good meeting yeah. you. Yeah. Um, how does it help me at a, at a grassroots level? Yeah. Great question. Please sit. Um, Firstly, I think there is no substitute to real learning, boss. Because I have not taken any course. And when I came to the one legislator, I thought it would be 3-4 years to understand and learn. Because as much as we study, like if you do engineering or any other course, until you don't work in the actual real world, until you don't work in your hands dirty, until you get your hands dirty, you won't really comprehend you know, the real world problems. Because हम जो सीखते हैं, समझते हैं, हमें जो पढ़ाया जाता है वर्सेस जो एक्चुअल सच्चाई है, बहुत सारे बहुत सारे बार बहुत बहुत ज़्यादा बार फर्क होता है। How does it help? It does help you, you know, go in better prepared. See, if you want to sort of implement policy at a, you know, grassroots level, you said जिला परिषद लेवल और ब्लॉक लेवल, 
इट विल हेल्प यू अंडरस्टैंड कि गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया की या स्टेट गवर्नमेंट की जो पॉलिसी मेकिंग है और उसका इंप्लीमेंटेशन है उसमें क्या कमियां हैं उसको आप कैसे मतलब प्रॉपरली uh, एक्सप्लॉयट कर सकते हो या उसको प्रॉपरली आप हाउ विल यू बी एबल टू कन्विंस पीपल और हेल्प पीपल अंडरस्टैंड कि क्या क्या बनाए बहुत सारे बार क्या होता है ना हम जो कानून बनाते हैं पार्लियामेंट में या लेजिस्लेचर में मैं सच बोलूं तो इसका ज्यादातर पार्लियामेंटेरियंस और लेजिस्लेटर्स को भी पूरी तरह से अंदाजा नहीं होता है हम लोग हाँ यहाँ ना बोल देते हैं आई यस नो यस खत्म बिल पास कर दिए हो गया बट कितने लोग एक्चुअली पढ़ते हैं फाइन प्रिंट कितने लोग देखते हैं और उसका जो इंप्लीमेंटेशन है जिसमें बहुत सारा फायदा हो सकता है लोगों को वो कितने लोग समझ पाते हैं नाउ दैट इज वेयर यू गाइज कैन कम इन एंड हेल्प बोथ द पब्लिक रिप्रेजेंटेटिव एंड द पब्लिक एंड आई थिंक यू कैन बी दैट ब्रिलियंट ब्रिज बिटवीन पीपल हु मेक दीज लेजिस्लेशन एंड पीपल हु एक्चुअली आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू बी द बेनिफिशरीज सो आप अगर आप कोई एक्सपेरिमेंट अगर आप कोई एक एक्ट लेते हो फॉर एग्जाम्पल वन ऑफ द मोर पॉपुलर एक्ट्स इन इंडिया इज राइट टू इंफॉर्मेशन जब कानून बनाया गया इनिशियली उसका पावर शायद ज्यादा लोगों को समझ नहीं आया होगा बट बाद में जैसा एक्टिविस्ट हैव स्टार्टेड यूजिंग इट एन जी ओज हैव स्टार्टेड यूजिंग इट एंड हैव स्टार्टेड एक्सपोजिंग देयर गवर्नमेंट्स इट जिला लेवल इट स्टेट लेवल इट सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट लेवल टूडे द पॉलिटिशियंस आर मोर अलर्ट कि भाई आर टी आई में पूछा जाएगा कुछ हम लोग अनशन करते हैं गड़बड़ करते हैं और जो चीज हम नहीं कर सकते हैं अगर वो करते हैं और कमिट हो जाते हैं तो ये बाहर आएगा जरूर एक ना एक दिन ये डर उनके मतलब मन में कहीं बैठा रहता है और जब एक सिविल सोसाइटी एक बहुत अलर्ट रहती है और चुस्ती से काम लेती है जैसे आप हो ट्रेंड हो तो यू कैन सर्टनली कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट यू कैन वर्क एज अ चेक मेट टू टू बोथ पब्लिक रिप्रेजेंटेटिव एट अ सर्टन लेवल टू गवर्नमेंट्स एंड ऑल्सो यू कैन हेल्प पीपल कि एक एक्ट या एक लेजिस्लेशन कैसे कैसे उसका फायदा हम उठा सकते हैं जैसा अभी मैंने बोला डीबीटी के बारे में बोला आपको शायद याद होगा राजीव गांधी जी ने एक बार कहा था प्राइम मिनिस्टर थे वो तब उन्होंने कहा था कि मैं दिल्ली में एक रुपया अगर रिलीज करता हूं वो नीचे आते आते सोलह रुप सोलह पैसा बन जाता है बीच में कोई 84 पैसा खा जाता है दिस इज वॉट प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया सेट नॉट मी बट आज जब डीबीटी आ गया मैं रईतु बंधु अभी बोल रहा था मैं रईतु बंधु जब आ गया तो सौ फीसद पैसा फार्मर को मिलता है यहां हैदराबाद में रिलीज करते हो उनके अकाउंट में सौ फीसद जाता है हमको देख के पीएम साहब ने भी इंस्पिरेशन लिया और उन्होंने पीएम किसान चालू कर दिया अच्छी बात है तो ये सारे चीज जो है मतलब स्टडी करने के लिए डीबीटी अब बहुत सारे इकोनॉमिस्ट बोलते हैं कि डीबीटी बहुत अच्छी प्रोग्राम है हम रईतु बंधु हमने चालू किया एक और प्रोग्राम हमने चालू किया यहाँ पे कल्याण लक्ष्मी लड़की मतलब अगर बालिक है 18 प्लस है उनके शादी के गरीब है तो तेलंगाना गवर्नमेंट वन लाख प्लस रुपी देती है इससे क्या हो गया ना यहाँ पे चाइल्ड मैरिजेस कम हो गए और यहाँ पे हम लोग एक केसीआर किट करके देते हैं इंस्टीट्यूशनल डिलीवरी को इंकरेज करने के लिए उससे आज तेलंगाना में इंस्टीट्यूशनल डिलीवरी फ्रॉम 30 परसेंट टू 50 परसेंट बढ़ गया इन्फेंट मोर्टालिटी कम हो गया मेटर्नल मोर्टालिटी कम हो गया और सीजेरियन ऑपरेशन कम हो गया ऑल ऑफ दीज कैन बी स्टडीड बाय यू गाइस। यू कैन एक्सप्लेन टू पीपल एंड द लॉ मेकर्स कि कौन सा चीज काम करता है कौन सी आपकी पॉलिसी काम कर रही है और कौन सी फेल हो गई है लोगों को भी समझा सकते हैं और दूसरी तरफ आप एक ड्यूअल रोल प्ले करके गवर्नमेंट्स को भी समझा सकते हैं एंड आई थिंक पब्लिक पॉलिसी विल हेल्प यू अचीव दैट आई थिंक ग्रेट ग्रेट सजेशन I get the, the pink the lady here. Yeah. Okay, I have the mic. Okay. Oh, you have the okay. Yeah. Yeah. Poonam, go for it. Hi. Namaskar, I'm Kitty Agaru. I'm Poonam. Hi. And uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate you for Ramappa on a cultural aspect. Um, you've uh, spoken about beautiful policies uh, which have been uh, undertaken by your government. and uh, first thing i would like to know that um, what are the steps taken when you come up with a policy and uh, secondly the recent uh, dalit bandhu scheme which has been announced um uh, is it really practical because the amount of money which has been announced for dalit bandhu why right now and uh, the amount of money which will be uh, you know spent on that scheme is huge so is it even practical that's my question Thank you, Poonam. Firstly, thanks on um, Ramappa. I think it's a great honor for uh, Telangana and the country also. In fact, to get uh, a UNESCO, UNESCO World Heritage Tag for one of our brilliant, uh, uh, you know, uh, traditional uh, heritage structures, and it was the first structure in Telangana, which again uh, I'm very, very proud of. And hopefully, we'll even get that for Hyderabad eventually, because Hyderabad, I keep saying, is one of those rare cities which has a combo of both heritage and the New Age vibe. so hyderabad should get it also let's all work towards it 
Now, your question about practicality of uh, Dalit Bandhu and other schemes. Punam, two, three things for you to think. Firstly, yes, it's a bold reform. It's very, very bold. It's very, very radical. And our Honorable Chief Minister can only dream big. That's his problem. He can't think small. He can't think big, you know, uh, dream small. When, he's, when he thought about Raitu Bandhu, the same question popped up. A lot of people said, uh, is it practical? Is it feasible? Will it work? We've not only done Raitu Bandhu successfully, we have now set the tone for the rest of the country. Today, about 11 states have come out with their own programs. In, in uh, Odisha, they call it Kalia. In uh, Bengal, they call it Krishak Bandhu, Krishi Bandhu or Krishak Bandhu, I think it's called. And like I said, Honorable Prime Minister himself uh, took it upon, uh, I think he took so much liking to the scheme, he also adopted it, he calls it PM Kisan. So Raitu Bandhu became a trendsetter that way. Like I told you, Mission Bhagirath, again, it became a source of inspiration for Jal Jeevan Mission, and today they're trying to implement it across the country. Mission Kakatiya, again, has become a role model for the rest of the country. I firmly believe, Punam, that uh, 75 years of independence, Azadi ke Amrut, Amrut Utsav, kya bulte ho? Amrit, whatever. Amrit Utsav, right. So, Prime Minister Ji ne bulaya tha hume, pichli saal. Bula ke unho ne poochha tha, all political parties he had called. He conducted a meeting, he said, bataiye ab kya kya karna chahiye, uh, 150 saal Bapu ke uh, uh, birth, ka, birth anniversary, और आजादी के 75 इयर्स क्या-क्या करना चाहिए तो उसमें मैं भी गया था एज अ पार्टी फंक्शनरी फ्रॉम टीआरएस सो आई टोल्ड हिम थ्री थिंग्स सर आई सेड द थ्री आई मंत्र इफ इंडिया रियली हैज टू प्रोपेल इटसेल्फ इनटू द नेक्स्ट लीग ऑर्बिट नेक्स्ट ऑर्बिट द थ्री आई मंत्र इज व्हाट आई थिंक वी ऑट टू बी फोकसिंग ऑन इनोवेशन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इंक्लूसिव ग्रोथ नाउ आई विल स्टार्ट विद द थर्ड वन इंक्लूसिव ग्रोथ मैं क्या बोल रहा हूं इंक्लूसिव ग्रोथ माने आज अगर आप इंडिया में देखते हो 75 इयर्स के बाद लाइक आई थिंक ओबामा और समरी सेड वेरी फेमसली देर आर टू अमेरिकस यू नो देर इज दैट अमेरिका एंड देर इज यू नो दिस अमेरिका लाइक वाइज इंडिया एक इंडिया है एक भारत है आज इंडिया में 75 फाइव ईयर्स के बाद भी दलित की अगर आप हालत देखोगे तो बहुत खराब है इंस्पाइट ऑफ रिजर्वेशन इंस्पाइट ऑफ वॉट एवर हैज बीन डन सो इफ यू लुक एट इट यू नो द मॉडल फॉर ट्वेंटी एथ सेंचुरी वेन इट कम वेन इट वॉज अबाउट दलित एंड हाउ टू हाउ टू बी मैंसिपेट दम इट वॉज थ्रू सोशल जस्टिस रिजर्वेशन But 75 years of experimentation has not worked. When plan A doesn't work, you have to think radically, you have to come to some other alternative. Now, why only Dalits? A lot of people question. Why can't it be, why is there no minority Bandhu? Why is there no tribal Bandhu? Why is there no BC Bandhu? Why, why not other subgroups and uh, social groups? Is it good to kind of segregate the society and do it this way? I would say, most definitely, if you look at any statistics, socio-economic indicators and statistics, Dalit as a community across the country, while they have, they are scheduled under the constitution, they are a scheduled category under the constitution, they are still the most downtrodden on any socio-economic indicator in the country. And they form a significant percentage of our population. They are about 16 to 17 percent in Telangana. And if you look at the country, I think I'm not very sure about the number, but it's quite substantial. If you leave out a certain sizable section of the population, in s even after 75 years, ignore them and continue to ignore them in spite of knowing fully well that none of your previous policies have worked, I think we are doing a great injustice not just to ourselves but our country and our future generations also. This is, yes, it's a bold experiment, it will require a lot of capital, but like I was pointing out to Vinaya, uh, you know, in my previous question, we are not just giving away money, it's not like we are giving away money uh, unhinged and unconditional. We are saying that uh, each family ko jo 10 lakh rupiah diya jayega under Dalit Bandhu, it has to be productively leveraged and it has to be converted, it has to be doubled or tripled over a period of time. That's the goal and we are not just going to give money and you know let them be. Our collectors, our nodal officers will work with them in helping set up mini dairies, in helping set them set up rice mills, in helping set up small micro units. And we'll ensure that somebody will move from BPL, below the poverty line, to above poverty line. That is the eventual goal of Dalit Bandhu. Yes, you're right. It will take significant, uh, it will have a significant strain on budget. 1,70,000 crores is the initial estimate. But it will be phased out. It will happen over a period of next five, four, five, six years. Each year we'll be looking at about three or four lakh families altogether. In Telangana it is uh, anticipated that there are about 17 lakh families. So if you spread it over a five-year program as a prior program, then you have to cover about three lakh plus people, three lakh plus families every year. And you have to remember one thing. 
each rupee you spend in your state on any any dbt or any program it will come back to the state in the form of revenues also we have spent nearly 1 lakh crores on irrigation more than 15% of that has come back in the form of taxes to the state it contributes to your growing economy to aapko aisa nahi lagna chahiye ki hum log ye kar chaiz kar rahe hain waste kar rahe hain aisa nahi hai if you are able to lift this one section from bpl to apl then i think that is the greatest service our government would have done to our country i am a very firm believer punam that honorable chief ministers program so far whatever is dreamed of he's been successful and once he set his eyes on something he's achieved it and this will also become a role model for the rest of the country i firmly believe that and this is something that we have to do 75 years after independence we can't you know we can't live in denial kal hum log dekh rahe the afghanistan mein kya ho raha hai the entire world is in denial the entire world is looking the other way the so called united nations the so called other you know powerful countries of the world we are seeing all these horrific pictures but we continue to look the other way the powerful leaders you know who want to be Uh, regional superpowers and all we seem to ignore them i am saying the same logic applies here as well we can't complete you know compl- continue to ignore the dalits the tribals and others we started with dalits tomorrow who knows our honorable chief minister might say you know let us help others also and we might even take up several programs but for now i think this is the agenda we are going to go ahead in spite of what the naysayers have said all along even when he started the telangana movement lot of people said this is impossible it's an impossible dream but he is a man who's made the uh, you know possible out of impossible so this is also possible and i i believe in it i'm completely uh, in alignment with that sir i just want to build i think uh, when 75 years a certain policy has in work we have to change and i think this is a bold step and when you're measuring success it's not about did 10 or 15% not benefit from it that's not the way it should be looked at if 85% or 80% have benefited then it's a success and any time when a visionary is imagining things even when i'm working with geetam sometimes people who know what the status quo is will never imagine what the future is so you do have to push those boundaries uh, so i want to add a question on that where uh, in 75 years beneficiaries of uh, the reservation or uh, social justice my uh, uh, observation or in my limited data points is people who have benefited maybe 75 years ago it's their same families or related families who are benefiting is there a way where we can say that if you benefited from a reservation either for employment or for education like the creamy layer and that it doesn't then pass on to some uh, your direct lineage and actually gives access to somebody else who's never benefited and that may actually spread access uh, to the people who have been underserved in our constitution no but you know in the us there's something called affirmative action i'm sure you've heard of it you know the age old discrimination against uh, you know african americans you know they wanted to overcome that so they came out with what is called as affirmative action i think if you look at uh, dalit bandhu i would look at it as affirmative action also you know the discrimination that this one social gra- group has faced over decades and centuries for you to be able to overcome it it won't happen overnight it will happen it will take time and as somebody has famously said initially everybody will laugh at you they'll mock you they'll they'll kind of uh, uh, you know uh, insult you in fact but eventually they'll come around and they'll join you and uh, they'll appreciate and applaud that's what i believe in now your point about the creamy layer and people who have enjoyed the benefits you know continuing to enjoy it if you look at the larger picture uh, bharat i think um, it's not that big an issue if you, if, if you really look uh, delve deeper into it because the percentage of people who have actually enjoyed and the percentage of people who have actually uh, uh, benefited from it is very very minor minuscule in fact so therefore to dwell on that and miss the bigger picture is not something i would do I'd rather have uh, uh, a, a significant chunk like you just put it agar Uh, out of 100 people if 85 were elevated then i would say okay i think i have achieved my objective let's not dwell on that 1 or 2% who have been benefit who've been benefiting and let's not you know kind of uh, uh, skew, negate skew the image yeah absolutely uh, we'll take one question here and then we'll get into faculty so please go ahead good morning sir hi uh, i'm anogna i'm from vijayawada andhra pradesh uh so i wanted to ask about the gap we see between policy policy making and policy execution and you've given us such great examples of how uh the state of telangana implemented all the examples that you've given i wanted to know how they bridge the gap how do you bridge the gap between policy, policy impl- making and policy execution well again manogya yeah. great question because like they say the most you know one of the most famous things uh, you know i've heard is the slip between the cup and the lip it's always there it's it's a very dangerous you know sometimes you know there are visionaries there are leaders who want to uh 
see the world a better place and you know who can come up and dream up big schemes like our honorable chief minister but um, the real mark of leadership is not just dreaming big but also working on that dream and you know work on it till you actually reach the goal i think that's a very very rare trait i'll just give you an example i'm sure you understand telugu so i'll probably just switch to telugu for a minute ksr garu ayna ayna lo unna goppa trait enti ante the big the, i think one of the traits i really admire is ipudu ma intiki evaru unnaru repudem breakfast ku vastunnaru ankonde ayna maaku cheptaru pilchi repudne ayna ostunnaru ayna idli tintaru karam podu tintaru karam podlo inte ne yeskuntaru meer ivanni pettala so he is that detailed when it comes to even the smallest of things me anukuntam appudu appudu ee chinna pani maaku telavada nen cheskolema aa maatra manage cheskolema adi oka chinna atlanti program kaina attention to detail alage untundi kaleshwaram project ki vachina attention to detail alage untundi aa kaleshwaram project lo ksr garu when he was working on the project he used to call up even village revenue officers a chief minister picking the phone and calling the vro saying em ayindi land acquisition enduku ivatledu raithulu noppinchu తొందరగా చేయాలి మనం మనకు నీళ్ళు వస్తాయి ఏం అవసరం ఆయనకి నేను ఒక ప్రాజెక్ట్ అని చెప్పి డ్రీమ్ పెట్టి ఫైనాన్షియల్ టైప్ చేసి అక్కడికి వదిలేయచ్చు కానీ మీరు అన్నట్టు ఆ డ్రీమ్కి పాలసీ మేకింగ్కి ఇంప్లిమెంటేషన్కి లీడర్షిప్ కరెక్ట్గా ఉంటాయి ఎందుకంటే ఇక్కడ బ్యూరోక్రసీ తప్పు కాదు పొలిటికల్ లీడర్షిప్ కమిటెడ్గా పనిచేస్తే పొలిటికల్ లీడర్షిప్ ఎండ్ టు ఎండ్ మొత్తం మానిటర్ చేస్తే ఐ థింక్ దెన్ విల్ అచీవ్ దాట్ సక్సెస్ లాడ్ ఆఫ్ పీపుల్ హ్యావ్ గ్రేట్ డ్రీమ్స్ లాడ్ ఆఫ్ పీపుల్ హ్యావ్ గ్రేట్ ఐడియాస్ నేను విమర్శ కోసం విమర్శ చేయను కానీ ఇప్పుడు స్లోగన్లు ఎన్నో విన్నాం మనం ఆ స్లోగన్లు ట్రాన్స్లేట్ అవ్వాలి పాలసీ ట్రాన్స్లేట్ అవ్వాలి ఇప్పుడు స్టాండప్ ఇండియా స్టార్టప్ ఇండియా నంబర్స్ చెప్పండి సక్సెస్ ఎంత అయిందో చెప్పండి చెప్పలేరు లాస్ట్ ఇయర్ ఇరవై లక్షల కోట్ల ప్యాకేజ్ అన్నారు ఎకానమీ స్టిమ్యులస్ అన్నారు నంబర్స్ చెప్పండి చెప్పరు నేనేమన్నా అంటే డోంట్ జస్ట్ యునో కైండ్ ఆఫ్ కన్ఫైన్ యువర్ సెల్ఫ్ టు స్లోగన్ ఇయరింగ్ ఆల్సో సీ సీ ఇట్ త్రూ ద ఎండ్ సీ ద పాలసీ త్రూ ద ఎండ్ అండ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ద జాబ్ ఆఫ్ ది ఎలెక్టెడ్ see we are elected representatives they are selected uh, uh, in an exam they are selected officials who have come through an exam bureaucracy so ma baadhyata ekko prajalaku mev jawabidari undali undali annapudu unte mana program manam edaithe conceptualize cheyipudu dalit bandhu annaru dalit bandhu kuda cm gar akkada to odile petra ayina the program ichi double bunch chesi odile pete manushi kaadu dani antu chuse daaka nijangane aa dalita kutumbalaki laabam jarige daaka odile petakunda chese nayakudu ksr kaabatti nenu aa dhairyam tho cheptunnanu ఖచ్చితంగా ఇట్ విల్ బి సక్సెస్ఫుల్ అని నమ్మకం అందుకే ఉంది నాకు సో ఐ హోప్ ఐ ఆన్సర్ యూర్ క్వశ్చన్ టు ఐ ఐ థింక్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద ఎగ్జాంపుల్ హీ సెడ్ అబౌట్ కాలింగ్ విలేజ్ రెవెన్యూ ఆఫీషియల్స్ ఐ వాజ్ రీసెంట్లీ ఇన్ డిన్నర్ వెర్ సమ్వన్ వాజ్ టెలింగ్ మీ దట్ దర్ వాజ్ అ ఇండివిజువల్ హూ డిడ్ ఐ డోంట్ రిమెంబర్ ది ఎగ్జాక్ట్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ బట్ రీబిల్డ్ అ ఫారెస్ట్ ఇన్ హిస్ నేబర్హుడ్ ఆర్ సమ్ డిడ్ దట్ అండ్ గాట్ ఇన్ ద న్యూస్ సో కేసీఆర్ గారు ద సీఎం సా దట్ అండ్ జస్ట్ ఫౌండ్ అవుట్ హూ ఈజ్ మేడ్ అ కాల్ టు హిమ్ అండ్ సెట్ కమ్ మీట్ మీ అండ్ హీ స్పెంట్ అ ఫుల్ డే విత్ దట్ పర్సన్ జస్ట్ ఇమాజిన్ a chief minister who's so busy taking time out to acknowledge somebody who's working for the environment so i think that's that's his attention to detail and his ability to help people who are working for the common good um so we'll now take a question from the wider audience i know i don't i hope you don't feel that i've ignored you if there's anyone here yes um mir this concert yeah good morning sir hi sir uh, i mentioned uh, what's your name sir ishwar sir ishwar gar chapan సార్ నీరు నిధులు అండ్ నియామకాలు సార్ ఫ్రమ్ వాటర్ ఫ్రంట్ వీఆర్ డూయింగ్ రియలీ గ్రేట్ జాబ్ అండ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ వెరీ మచ్ ఫర్ ఆల్ ఫర్ ద గవర్నమెంట్ సో ద థర్డ్ వన్ నియామకాలు వాట్ ఈస్ ద పాలసీ అండ్ వేర్ వీ వాంట్ టు గో అండర్ యువర్ గవర్నమెంట్ ఈశ్వర్ గారు ఆన్సర్ చేసిన తెలుగు యూ స్పీక్ తెలుగు ఐ హోప్ ఎస్ సార్ రైట్ సో ah theek hai hindi ya english bolte uh, you know the biggest challenge kuchun the biggest challenge for any government in the world be it joe bidens or narendra modi's or ksr's is employment because if you look at statistics thank you for saying we have done well on water uh, water resources front i think that's kind of accepted uh, uh, you know throughout india and throughout the state as well even on the you know capital part we have done rather well with the state continues to grow it's one of the fastest growing economies in the country on the third part on employment basically employment and education uh, op- employment opportunities no government in the world can provide employment government employment to all of its youth and the problem in india is unique problem in india is 
More than 50% of our population, the median age, uh, is less than the median age of 27. And more than 65% of our country, the, uh, the, you know, is less than the median age of 32. Now, this is a staggering statistic if you think about it, because the workforce, as we call it, the age group between 18 to 35, is quite high in number. How do you provide gainful employment to all of them in government sector? Possible hai kya? Nahi hai. Na sirf hum se, balki Modi ji se, Joe Biden ji se, jo bhi hai, un se bhi nahi ho sakta hai. Nobody can give government employee to, employment to all of them. So what do governments do then? What governments have to do is encourage private investment, encourage employment opportunities to our youngsters. That's, all, that's, that's our bounden responsibility. So what did we do? In 2004, in fact, the first legislation that we have enacted, 2014 rather, sorry, I correct myself. 2014, the first piece of legislation that we have enacted in Telangana Assembly in October 2014 was the TSI pass. Now, what is TSI pass? TSI pass is Telangana State Industrial Project Approval Self-Certification System. Our Honorable Chief Minister sat with uh, different industry groups, CII, FICI, FITAPSI, Dicky, the Women uh, Entrepreneurs Group, Aleep, etc., etc., for almost seven hours. He interacted with them. He asked them what the pain points are. And then he sat with the bureaucracy. I think uh, Mr. Meena was part of it. Then they charted out a program called TSI Pass. You know, I'll just give you three salient features of TSI Pass. You'll understand what I'm saying. And how that propelled us into the top of the ease of doing business rankings in India. The first fundamental feature of TSI Pass is self certification. What does self certification mean? If you have a Rudraram, which is where you are, a zamin, two big zamin, four big zamin, and you want to put a unit, you don't have any permission from the government. You can start your factory construction on day one without seeking any clearance from any municipal body or gram panchayati or even state government. Now, does any other state in India allow this? No. Why do we allow? We are reposing faith in our investors. We are saying, as long as you believe that you are in compliance with the law of the land, we will allow you to construct. But of course, for regulatory purposes, because we request that you submit an application online. The TSI pass portal is there. You put application in there. That my company's name is Nature of Activity, this is investment, and we want to do business here. What happens after you submit an application? By statute, by legislation, we promise all clearances, even if that means, even if you are a red category industry or a green or a orange or any other category industry also, we promise all clearances in a time-bound manner in 15 days. Now, the joke in industry is that her government is a single window. But a single window ke piche hamesha multiple window. Hota hai. Hum, hamesha hi hota hai. Bolne ke liye ek, kehne, karne ke liye kuch aur. But how is Telangana different? How we are different is, if we do not deliver on the 15-day promise, on the 16th day, it's a deemed approval by legislation, by statute. No other state in India will tell you this, including Gujarat, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, etc., etc. And the third and most important thing, the bureaucracy, if we realize and if we determine that they are holding up a file beyond 15 days, from 16th day, they can be fined a sum of rupees 1,000 per day as a penalty for holding up such clearance. Now, no other state in India will tell you this also. In fact, I was in a meeting with a gentleman called John Weimeyer. He's a, he's a KPMG global chairman back in 2016 in New York. So, when I told him that no other state in India will tell you this, he smiled and he said, uh, no other state in the United States also will tell you this. There is no such policy. If someone is skeptical here, that it's okay to say and listen to it, it's okay to do it, it's okay to do it. We have a policy that has been about 6 years ago. 2014, it has been about 7 years ago. And in these 7 years, Telangana, through TSI Pass, we have been able to attract more than 2.2 lakh crores of investment, create direct employment potential to 15 lakh people. Now, the question that will pop up, Ishwar Garu, going back to your question, how does that, you know, uh, support the Telangana youth in gaining gainful employment? What we have to do is, while we attract investments, we also have to build our youth's ability to be able to lap up those opportunities. Till such time as we do not train them, skill them, reskill them, upskill them, they'll not be able to latch onto the opportunities. 
some states have come out with a very retress, retrogressive policy. Haryana, for example, even Andhra Pradesh, I think even Karnataka, has set 75% reservation to locals. I'm saying in a private enterprise, in a free market, how can you say that even in skilled employment or semi-skilled, you have to go in for reservation? It is counterproductive if you ask me. I was speaking, I'm, I'm not going to name names, but I was speaking to a large business group about three days ago. They said one of the reasons why we are trying to move out of Haryana is their 75% reservation policy. Because it is not feasible. So what did we do, Telangana? We said we'll flip it and we'll come out with a positive side of it. We said, you come to Telangana and invest. We of course promise all clearances in a time-bound manner. We also ensure that we give you trained youth, you know, called as, uh, you know, under a program called TASK, Telangana Academy for Skill and Knowledge. For example, if you're setting up an industry and you need 100 people, we'll train 200 people at our cost and we'll give you the 200. You can cherry pick the best 100 among them. This is a policy we got. And the third thing we did, we said if you, you'll get the normal incentives, subsidies, etc. if you set up an industry in Telangana. But if you employ locals, I'll give you additional incentives. That's the, that's the way we are going about it. So we've taken, you know, a positive view on the local issue, the local demand for jobs. So that's how we've been successfully, in fact, uh, I I'm happy to share with you, Ishwar Garu, two or three days ago, in fact, in Parliament, uh, the Ministry of Statistics has released a report which has showed that Telangana is this, uh, an unemployment rate in Telangana is the second lowest in the country. I'm not happy, again, relatively speaking, but nevertheless, we are doing our bit to complete our, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, to encourage investments, to encourage uh, more employment being created in the private sector. On the government side also, government recruitment also, we have completed more than 1.39 lakh recruitment. We will be, in fact, we, have, we were going through a bit of an issue with union government on the zonal system. In fact, through zonal system, we, we brought in government employment, we brought in 95% reservation to locals in government sector. We didn't touch the private sector, but in the government sector, we went about a reservation system, 95% being reserved for Telanganites. And now that took a time, a bit, bit, bit while to get approved. Recently it has been approved and we got the presidential assent as well. So hopefully now the remaining recruitment will also be done. Thank you, Thank you sir. So I, we've heard a lot about um, uh, big dreams and uh, success stories and I think uh, it's there for everyone to see. But for you as an individual, uh, you've had your own individual journey, particularly focusing on your time in public life. Um, and I'm sure that for every success there's a few failures uh, that don't see the light of day and our students here when they take on any ambition any vision I'm sure that they are bound to face failure how I want you to speak about maybe one failure that's had a very strong impact on you and how do you deal with it emotionally how did you overcome that challenge and uh, overall now what is your approach towards failure well, firstly I mean this is real life so it is not movies where you only see the good side uh, you know all cool things happening in real life, in, 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 in a real world, you'll definitely have failures from time to time. Um, if you ask me personally what was sort of, uh, not upsetting, but uh, disappointing, uh, so to put, I'd say the delay it took in the formation of the state of Telangana was one that really upset us because, you know, it, it led to a, a, a crescendo being built and it led to a lot of, you know, people, people's expectations being built. As a result, a lot of people even had to commit suicide, you know, to, to achieve this dream of Telangana, which was very upsetting, which was very, very uh, putting off. Because in a democracy, it's, al it's, it's always supposed to be about the people. It's about the people's will. In India, unfortunately, you know, we don't have a scientific policy on the formation of new states. On one hand, we have Goa, which is a very, very small state with a few million people as a state. On the other hand, we have Uttar Pradesh, which is like 22 crore or 24 crore. I don't know if anybody is there from Uttar Pradesh. Anybody at all? Where is it? Lucknow. Lucknow? Lucknow. Lucknow. Yeah. On the other hand, we have Uttar Pradesh. If Uttar Pradesh was a separate country, they would be the sixth largest country in the world. India is in India. Goa is in India. There is a state in India. There is also Uttar Pradesh. So the problem is that when Telangana was going on, it was very offsetting. It was very putting off. Why? There was a bill passed in the parliament. Or in the parliament, there was a rational bill. Just do it and what do you mean? Why do you mean death with? Democracy may kyun achi. It was very, very putting off. But then we realized today, in spite of whatever we think, in spite of all the utopian ideas we have, 
the real world is driven again on a lot of other compulsions for example political compulsions kafi sare hote hain jaisa jaise inordinate delay maine abhi bataya so it, the, the fundamental reason being ki agar hum telangana dete hain to kitne parliament seat mil sakte hain agar nahi dete hain to kitna you know fayda hoga politically this is what is weighing heavily on the minds of people in delhi they don't really think about logon ko kya chahiye kyun hame dena chahiye kyun karna chahiye that is one thing secondly as an industry minister you know when when uh, i was pitching because hyderabad is one of those stay, uh, regions and hyderabad is one of those uh, uh, cities which has a brilliant ecosystem on defense and aerospace in fact there were a lot of defense labs that were set up like decades ago in hyderabad for strategic reasons because because of geographical location which have really spawned out a good ecosystem to main gaya tha 3 saal pehle union government ke paas maine kaha wahan jab defense minister jo thi unse kaha ki please set up a defense industrial production corridor between hyderabad and bangalore because these two cities are very very have very very strong ecosystem agar yahan pe yahan pe agar aap lagaoge तो इंटरनेशनल इन्वेस्टर्स को भी अट्रैक्ट करने में बहुत फायदा हो सकता है क्योंकि मोदी साहब कहते रहते हैं मेक इन इंडिया तो मैंने कहा अगर मेक इन इंडिया कामयाब होना है तो आपको एक ऐसी जगह चुनना चाहिए जहां पे कामयाबी की ज्यादा स्कोप हो अनफॉर्चुनेटली द मिनिस्टर सेस वी हैव डिसाइडेड दैट इट विल बी इन बुंदेलखंड आई सेट वेर इज बुंदेलखंड सेट उत्तर प्रदेश मैंने कहा ठीक है बहुत अच्छी बात है इरादे नेक है बट कौन जाएगा वहां पर कैसे जाएगा वहां पर कोई इको है कुछ है कैसे होगा बोलते हैं नहीं नहीं हमने डिसीजन ले लिया मैंने कहा किस बेसिस पे लिया क्यों आई वाज हैविंग अ फ्रेंडली बैटर यू नो द मिनिस्टर सेस नहीं नहीं डिसाइडेड प्राइम मिनिस्टर डिसाइडेड तो क्या कंपलशन क्या था क्या क्राइटेरियन क्या था अस्सी सीट आपके पास है भाई पार्लियामेंट में हमारे पास सत्रह ही है तो हमारी आवाज कम सुनते हैं वो एक बहुत डिसअपॉइंटिंग बहुत पुटिंग ऑफ होता है और एक बहुत बुरा बुरी बात यह लगता है भारत इफ यू लुक एट द एंटायर साउथ ऑफ इंडिया all six states in south of india have done exceedingly well on family planning you know uh, the population control that india was championing uh, so where successive governments were championing south of india has done extremely well tomorrow in delimitation we will be penalized because hamari population control theek thi to hamare seat aur bhi kam ho jayenge ye kahan ki reet hai ye kahan ki you know how how is this logical if anything you should encourage incentivize and you know tell people that you know you should have more because you've done well but unfortunately our systems our processes our thinking is flawed so it is very upsetting very putting off so what is the best way to you know deal with failure how do you or overcome upset? this how do you overcome how do you overcome it do more of it <laughs> whatever you know whatever you worked on what wherever you failed or wherever you were kind of upset uh, whatever you were upset with do more of it be at it chodo mat lage raho i think that's the only way you'll succeed there's no i mean I, you this sounds cliched this sounds extremely uh, repetitive and boring but there is no substitute and please celebrate failure har koi fail hota hai har koi fail hota hai chahe kuch bhi bolo kuch bhi kaho har kisi ne kahin na kahin fail hua hai so you have to celebrate failure you have to understand that it's a part of our growth story and that's the only way we can move ahead if failure upsets you so much that uh, you know it uh, you, you kind of want to quit don't do that because i think uh, very often the next big success is just around the corner is what they say to lage raho keep be very tenacious be persistent continue to do what you're doing i think that will keep you in good stead so we we will be not taking any more questions but i think the example there is abraham lincoln contested 17 times and lost before becoming the president how many times did you contest any one time <laughs> long way to go <laughs> uh, so we'll close the session here we thank uh, ktr garu for his valuable time Uh, and all the students faculty to come and listen to him Thank for you guys. valuable insights um, i request the kautilya students to come on stage to get a image with uh, uh, our minister akrit vidhan